quarterback, Crandall. He throws, pass intercepted. Ryan Robinson left the 40 to the 45, to the 50. Dodging tackles into the 45 and on to the 43-yard line is safety Brian Robinson, brought down by Junior Smith of East Carolina. Now let's see if the offense can make it pay off. Out of the eye, Frederick Beasley's a tailback to play fake to Beasley, and Nix is going long to Sanders. He's got it with the 7 to the 5. He's gone. Touchdown. That's a pretty big win. I tell you, when you, when you when you prepare like we did, we had our goal for this game. We came out had a pretty hot team out there. They had a pretty hot team. I mean, they had a good plan, and they played a great football game. Thank goodness we weren't planning on a no one point win. Now that wasn't our job. It wasn't our goal. We didn't know when it was going to come, but it came. Four or five interceptions. A lot of deep balls. Sweep last week, deep ball this week, but it came. And you took that and you took it to them. Syracuse beats them by one, Virginia Tech by seven, Duke by three, you by three touchdowns. That's about right. That's about right. Penn State wins by six to Indiana. You did a good job. I'm proud of you, man. I'm proud of you. That's a hard fall win. Those guys played good. They played real good. I thought they did a great job. And now we're down to two. We're down to two. And this this is this is George is it now. George is it. This is the Auburn Football Review with Coach Terry Bowden. Brought to you by your Alabama Coca-Cola bottler. Always Coca-Cola. Colonial Bank, your we can do bank. Great Southern Wood, makers of Osmos pressure treated pine. If it doesn't say Osmos on the yellow tag, believe me, you don't want it. Golden Flick Snack Foods, great taste since 1923. Alabama Power, the energy to make Alabama better. LDDS, the official long distance carrier of the Auburn Alumni Association. By Ziegler, a tradition of great taste. Your Alabama Toyota dealer. I love what you do for me, Toyota. Price All Incorporated. Look for the lion at authorized dealers. Price All on the prowl. John Deere and your local John Deere dealer, where you'll find a complete line of outdoor power equipment for your farm and home. And by Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Alabama, the caring company. Welcome. 20 in a row for the Tigers. A hard fought. 38 to 21 victory over East Carolina. Coach, uh, didn't come easy. No, I hope everybody got the homecoming game they wanted. <laughs> it never, I never said it was going to be the game that I wanted. So but much we got those it. guys is talking about a patsy out of conference. I schedule. told them this to me is one of the finest teams we've played this year. I put them right there up there behind Florida, uh, as one of the top football teams. I think they, they, uh, they'll be hard to beat. The the ability to do whatever it takes to win mm -hmm. showed yesterday. Well, that's right. I mean, uh, defensively, they were going to throw it 47 times. That's okay throwing it 47, but don't throw interceptions. They threw four. Uh, offensively, uh, if you're going to stop the run, do it with seven. When you do it with nine people, we're going to hit the pass over top. And so that's what it took yesterday, the week before something else. I like this team. They're, they're doing the things necessary to win each game. And, it, and of course, you've got to recognize uh, what it takes to win those games. And, and uh, a lot of injuries yesterday. You had to play through a lot well, of injuries. Well, I think, uh, really, in our secondary, a lot of injuries came in the first half. They had an 80 to 88 yard drive. We couldn't keep the same four people in there two series in a row. Lose one, this guy would move over and play a different position. He hasn't practiced that position all week. Another guy comes in. We only lost our continuity. We have to regroup. Uh, we've got to get some people well because the throw and attack we saw yesterday. In any, in nothing compared to what we're going to see this Saturday coming up. You are so right. Georgia and Zaire are dead ahead. Let's go to the dressing room now and talk to first with some of the DBs who had such a good game yesterday. Excuse their game plan. They really, you know, open our, open our eyes up a little bit. But you stop them with four interceptions, and that was a key. Yeah, we still we stayed into the game, and you know, we communicated with each other. We had a couple of busts, but then again, we came back and got things together and, and came out on top. Without the interceptions, they would have been in the game at the end. Yeah, uh, it's a big key for us to go out and uh, create some interceptions so we can get the offense the ball. And uh, 
it's a great team, great passing team, great running team. We just uh, had to settle down in the second half and just play all the football and go out and win like we should. We had a couple guys go down, but I think they played well until they went down, and we had to have people to step in and get the job done, and fortunately I was able to be there. You never know what it's going to take to win a football game. That's right. You never know. You just keep working hard, and hopefully your chance will come, and tonight we won. I think it would have been a, a better game if those guys in the secondary wouldn't have made those big plays. And uh, they, played, they played a hell of a game, and uh, they came here with a good plan. And uh, I think we just, as a team, we played good good enough to win. And I think that's, that's, that's all we needed was to win. Oh, yeah, they ran a lot of three-step passes, you know, which is hard on the defensive line and the defensive backs. I mean, because everything's happening, you know, quick, quick. Like I said, East Carolina came with a great game plan. You know, they came in wanting to beat us and try to knock us off our pedestal. This team is a very well-balanced team, you know, running, running wild, passing wild. We got Steve Davis, Joe Frazier, Harold Mara, plus we got Patrick Nix, Frank Sanders, and Thomas Bailey, and the Fuller, and Jesse McCurry. So uh, I think it really balanced off uh, even from offense. And it took that to win today. Yes, it did. They were not going to let you run the football today. They were uh, biting them to throw it to Frank Sanders. They, lot, they, um, they came in with a good game plan. Came in with a lot of, lot of blitz and a lot of stunts up front. You reckon they didn't think much of you or what? Oh, I, I really don't know. I guess they figured that um, a, lot, a lot of my passes were caught outside. I don't know, man. <laughs> I, they came in with a, a game plan to try to stop the run because Steve did so good last week. My offense is, um, Coach Bowden realized that and they just stopped throwing the ball up top. Coach, I got to give Coach Bowden a lot of credit. You know, see, we run um, a post, we score with it. And next time, time we get the ball, first play, it comes right back to the same kind of route and we, we throw another one. They covered it pretty good that, the next time, but Frank went up and made a great catch. And you know, when you got to you throw into a guy like Frank, um, you know, and guys like Thomas and some of those, you know, it makes the job a lot easier. And, uh, you know, I got to give them a lot of credit. Frank had a great day. The offensive line had a great day. And it's a big win for all very big win. Okay, we'll get into the first half of play. A beautiful day. This is when you're supposed to play football, Coach, at 1 o'clock in the That's afternoon. Right. I wish we'd have them all at 1 o'clock, and, and TV would just adapt to us. Yeah. Uh, well, the Auburn Network did for pay-per-view anyway. <laughs> okay, we pick it up with uh, stop them on the opening drive, and they are about to go into punt formation as we pick up the action in the first quarter. Well, our defense really first three series, two or three stopped them, and then Thomas Bailey gets us going. Now, we've been waiting for some returns. Boom, here it is. Excellent return, about 19 yards, I believe. But it gets us opening up in their territory, and uh, we began to set the tempo right away. Good time for uh, the kicking game, to, uh, the return game to come around. Mm -hmm. And Steve Davis, again, picking up powerful yards. We, uh, it's funny, we, we don't get excited when he gets 90 yards on the day, but he still had a great day because they, again, their defense stacked the front to stop the run, and then we start doing some other things. Pat Nick scrambles around here. Beautiful. You don't see Pat scramble too much. We don't say he's the fastest guy in the world, but that's Frank Sanders for about a 14-yard gain, but it was third and 16. So they, so Matt Hawkins comes out, who had a terrific day. Three field goals, a lot of good kickoffs. I'm glad he's on that right hash. That right hash is giving him trouble, but he pops it right in and uh, showed a lot of confidence there. Had good kickoffs, like you say, and uh, perfect on his field goals. What? This is... This is the way you want to cover on, now, on the kickoff. Somebody wonders what our fullbacks do. This is what our fullbacks do. Joe Frazier <laughs> and Harold Morrow, that's what they do. <laughs> they play football. Oh, wow. <laughs> that was oh, a great man. hit. Oh, that was a great And now here they come again. But I'm telling you, this, this little back here will probably play the NFL. He's about five, six, or 7, 185 pounds, 4'3", 40, strong. You'll see some runs that run blue. I think their quarterback and their tailback and the catching ability of their receivers makes this one of the top offensive teams we've seen. Here's third and five. They make a first down, but here's third and five now. They're using, they're, they were using a very controlled passing game, and once they got past their first uh, series jitters, they began to really excel at it, and then our defense came back and, and made the difference with the interception. Stop them there, but uh, Auburn does not move the ball. This is their next possession. There's Great job. Shannon it. Suttles, you see, play good. You haven't seen him much this year, but now because of some injuries, Alonzo Etheridge uh, bruised some ribs. Uh, Bobby Dappin uh, got hurt in practice. Boy, I tell you, Pelton, there's our defense, too. They pound them. That's what I was impressed away. They're at the toughness of their football team because we hit them about as hard as you can hit, you know, about as hard as we can, and they kept coming back. Late in the quarter now, here comes the uh, first scoring drive. Well, there's Pat Nix jumping on that tight end and a big play to, uh, <clears throat> to our tight end. We were able to get to him a couple of times, uh, but most of our flows were going outside. And here's the fake. Patrick handles the blitz well, and we throw Thomas Bailey. Big, big, big play here. Now Patrick Nix did a great job. They, they, this team did not blitz much the last seven games the teams were playing. This game, they blitzed almost every time. And so, again, their game plan was different. We get outside on the sweep and walk in now to go up 10 to nothing. And uh, 
you know, that's that that's a lot different last week against Arkansas, the, the, the getting up like that. And you made a point. We never gave up the lead all day. As, as good as, as they were playing, and we never got behind to the point where I think their, uh, their momentum and encouragement would have been great. Good hit there by Chris Schiller. That was the beginning. This is the moving in the second quarter now, the beginning of a 15-play drive for them. Well, that they, they, they had, what, 17 minutes of the clock in the first half to our 12. And I think their quarterback was taking a control short passing, so you rushed hard, but you couldn't get to him. And a beautiful throw and catch there. Very well covered, but it was a beautiful throw and catch. Uh, and then it's now it's just 10 to 7. Now it becomes imperative that uh, Auburn move the football and uh, make a big third down here. Well, that's a big play there. They had both those feet straddling that uh, that uh, line. They could have given him no first down and first down. We got it. We haven't been getting those. You see them blitzing now every time. There's Pat Nick saying, hey, let's go over top. We did a little stop and go. Safety out, ran up, and Frank Sanders wide over top. Patrick took a hit as soon as he threw it. He got one of those smash mouths on that one. Yeah, he <laughs> took the shot. But I'll tell you, Patrick Nix, I mean, you can say what you want to, but he throws a very catchable deep ball. You don't see him overthrow too many of them. He throws them soft where you can catch them. There's good pressure. Pelton really getting after that. Quarterback took some hits. Uh, but here is the play probably that cost him disappointed the whole day. Third and 22. Now watch this guy get the last three yards. Wow. But that is as good of running as I've seen. He gets 23 yards. And again, you hate to see that. It's a great effort, but we can't let that happen because this, this is a critical drive. At this point, you have three key starters on defense on the sidelines, too. And here's a play here where we think the guy's going to step out of bounds and didn't want to get the, the out-of-bounds penalty. And, our, and, and Dale McGee backs off. I think we ought to just go ahead and hit him. And uh, he's already got the first down. And uh, they score. We're really, they're really got some good. But all of a sudden, Old Reliable steps in, Fred Smith, and shuts it down. And uh, the only guy on the team that could have caught Fred was that tailback. He's faster than probably anybody uh, is four, four. on our defense. <laughs> and uh, he's only got caught him. But this is where, uh, boy, we had three terrible plays here. I called a real bad play. that messed up the formation and got us in trouble. And uh, we have to settle for a field goal. It's important that we get points, but touchdown would have really put a put a put a damper on their effort. But we're going to see a, a big, big play here that ends the half. It may have been one of the big ones, right there. Another serious drive. Right Hits there. their receiver in the shoulder pad. Alvis, uh, Kid Alvis strips it off. We come out there with a lead, 20 to 14, and they've given us probably as good a half of football as they played this year. Very, uh, still very much a football game as we go to the halftime, and we'll be back in just a minute. You can always count on Auburn University. And when I want real refreshment, it's always Coca-Cola. For a bold, crisp taste, you can count on time after time. That's why in Auburn and around the world... Partners in Integrity. Linked by a heritage of quality you'll know by this prism, the hallmark of your official Rolex jeweler. See the most complete selection of the timepiece that sets a world standard of achievement. With a warranty and service backed by eight decades of Rolex experience. So if you're looking for a Rolex... Okay, let's give you the events calendar for this Auburn week. Georgia week, always big. Tiger talk. Uh, you can call Coach Bowden on Thursday night at stations all around the state and get the latest. The Georgia game coverage, of course, begins with uh, the Tiger tailgate show at 4.30. Game time is just shortly, uh, kickoff time is shortly after 6. So you join uh, Paul Ellen, Charlie Trotman, and Jim Five, Quentin Riggins, Andy Burcham, all the guys. Lionel James and Tucker Fredrickson will be the special guest on the tailgate show beginning at 4.30 this Saturday afternoon. The Auburn football preview uh, will be seen around the state at mostly at 11 o'clock on Saturday morning. Then Auburn basketball is getting underway. The Cliff Ellis era begins with uh, an exhibition game with the Swedish national team. That's at 8 o'clock. And at 6 o'clock, before the 8 o'clock game, Coach Joe Champy's Auburn women take on the Russian national team. So we got a double header of basketball Friday night beginning at 6 o'clock. And our congratulations to Beth Ray, the homecoming queen. Uh, who was uh, crowned and honored at halftime uh, at yesterday's game, while you all probably were getting a lot done in the dressing room because... Uh, the we had a lot to do. We couldn't get get involved too much with homecoming. We had to figure a way to slow down their offense yeah. and to uh, make sure we made some adjustments and, and recognize what we needed to do on, on with our offense. And so we had, we had a work cut out for us that second half. And we'll see that in just a minute. 
Fort Day really had a great plan. If, if we're going to beat you, make us complete the pass. If we don't complete those, we have a tough time. Okay, we pick up the action now. We're about six minutes into the uh, uh, the uh, third quarter of play now here. Well, they, they, they we missed some tackles there. That we, you know, defensively we were we, we missed a few tackles Saturday that we normally don't miss. But they're starting to move the football now, and you know, uh, it's still a point of anything can happen. But here's where the changeover. Brian Robinson's got his finger sewed up and taped up from a dislocated finger uh, that he got in the first half. They sewed up and uh, comes back, and there's the one, and uh, uh, they get a big play here. Uh, instead of them moving the ball down to our territory, what beautiful pass by Pat Nix. Watch the way he's thrown. This is the one place you had to throw it, right over the outside, softly threw it, laid it right in Terrific. for the big touchdown. Terrific. Now, uh, you go for two to even things up on the scoreboard. Get I back think, into the seven. Oh, you get a good shot here for the TV camera here. As you look over here, it shows it right here to Fred Beasley. They covered all the inside routes, and by doing that, they left the flare to the back open and uh, gave us a good two-touchdown lead right now. And that feels pretty good. Now you're thinking they've got to score three times or they've got to make two-point plays. And then the defense starts to crank it up now and really starts to take charge. And uh, uh, pretty much the game, by the second half at this point in time, they're throwing some completions but they're really not doing the things. They, they had a huge second quarter and a little bit of the third quarter. You make him go to third down on almost every series, and that you can't keep making third down plays. No, there's the boy. Now we're getting all these people tighter, and we're starting to get our good people. We had uh, secondary people injured and moved around, and uh, I, I like the way they kept the poise because this team had a, uh, about uh, 78 plays there offense. And then we come right back. The very next possession, go over top again. They cover it. But you get big Frank Sanders up there, and what is uh, and Pat Nichols again throws a soft throw, good protection. He had we had some sacks. They put they got a sack on us one or two, but not much. Good protection most of the day. And all those long balls, they pick up the blitz every time. Beautiful job there, uh, Willie Gauthier, uh catching the curl route right there. Now gets us down here. Boy, there's a good job by uh, uh, Thomas Bailey on a third and three, making a big catch. And I think you'll see the. The, the sweep hit the corner now. They, they blitz. See, they blitz the safety mm -hmm. inside because our sweep usually goes right downhill inside that tight end, and uh, they missed it both both touchdowns. They missed it and called the the, the inside blitz, and they're doing a guessing game. People mm -hmm. are going to do a guessing game on that goal line when they start doing that. There's that outstanding back now who rushed for 120 yards, the, the second back to rush for 100 100 yards in our 20 game streak over the last years, but it's going to happen sometime. Mm -hmm. This team is just good offensively. They got four, over 400 yards. They're they, just good. They are very, very good. That's what they average most every year. Scott said, now Gary Walker deflects it, and Scott Stacy gets his interception. And again, that's the fourth interception of the, of the game right there. I believe they hold us here. We have a good drive going. Kick the field goal, yeah. Yes, we had hold us to kick it a field goal. It's a good, th good throw to Steve Davis, the, the secondary receiver. He was looking downfield and came back to throw it to Steve Davis. They hold us. And we kicked the field goal. Third, I think, third of uh, uh, without missing for uh, Matt Hawkins. Pretty much the, going to the fourth quarter, the game is in hand now. And I think they understood that, too, because they... Uh Otis Mounds, watch that beautiful play by Otis Mounds. He makes two big plays here. Uh, Otis Mounds, who along with Ray Luster, was our, one of our captain for the homecoming game. He's had a lot of adversity he's overcome. The buddy played the second half when Alvis got hurt. Did a super job. He's been a lot, meant a lot to our team. They run the football mostly in the fourth quarter, and now yep. this is the last series of the game. Yeah, there's any time when you're when you're trying to run the clock out, you run sweeps. The the quarterback naked bootleg is your counter to it. You really don't want him to throw the football. You want him to run, not hand the ball off, and, and, and eat the clock. Because we're trying to go down there. We're only up 38-21, and you'll see our uh, Beasley now playing and Damian Craig. We have a little run. That wasn't really a throw. That was just a quarterback draw to try to run the clock and. You talk about right here. There, he fell down right there. <laughs> and, boy, he just threw it right then. We went down on the knee after that. The great job trying to recognize those fans. They were so good. You got, you know, our fans are there making the noise as loud as ever. And the hardest thing for our fans, when a game is, is scary, they get quiet. Don't get nervous. <laughs> get loud. <laughs> 84,000 yesterday. Great crowd. We'll be back in just a minute. They had a week to rest and scheme. Well, just like last year, they've got the week off now in a week that we prepare for our homecoming. And so, and we've got some kids banged up. Uh, uh, I'm sure we'll find a way to try to make that to our advantage uh, and hopefully won't be flat. But they're going to scheme. They'll, they, they'll change some things, that, some new things, and they'll be very prepared. Georgia is scoring so many points. They're the number two ranked offense in our conference. Uh, they do so many things offensively that uh, they're going to be tough to beat. Uh, Zyra, if he's hot, uh, uh, we all know we got faceless. And besides that, it's Georgia. 
It is Georgia indeed. Uh, Auburn Network on the air at 4.30. And be sure to be on hand with your audacity pins on for Auburn and Georgia next week. And we'll have the playback for you on Sunday. Thank you for being with us. See you next time. Coach Bowden's apparel provided by The Locker Room.